All right, guys, full disclosure, we are playing the Master Chief Collection version. My original Xbox has gone kaput. It's also me completely by myself this time. Uh, I wish that wasn't the case, but sadly, I have nobody right now. No, it is it is the middle of the week, and so, you know, people have... People are either working or certain people are taking classes, so... Yeah, we're gonna figure this out. We're gonna work through this together, alone. We are playing the longest level, though, in Combat Evolved, arguably, and it's... It's definitely interesting. It... I... I'm not a fan of this level, Assault on the Control Room. We're doing 16 years of Halo, so we're playing basically every Halo up until and including Halo 5. Kind of in, uh... It originally started as celebration of Halo Wars 2's upcoming launch, but then I took forever to continue going. Uh, people have been very upset <laughs> that I kind of petered out on this series. I didn't want to do Let's Plays because I didn't know if that would piss people off because they were subscribed for more scripted uh, analyses or Q&As at the time. Because, man, remember when I was doing the Q&As regularly? But yeah, Combat Evolved, uh, this level in particular, I think, highlights m really well more so than be a good level on its own. I think it highlights the strengths of Combat Evolved's core combat loop, because, well, Combat Evolved is definitely, I think, the more simple of the Halo games. There is also, you know, that saying, keep it simple, stupid, because uh, through simplicity comes very, very, very well... Uh, very well-crafted uh, balance. You know, the less moving parts you have, the more room you have to balance everything perfectly. And I do think Combat Evolved, out of all the Halo games, has the best core combat loop. You know, the AI versus player engagements, I think, are balanced and refined the best. That's not to say the other Halo games are bad by any stretch of the imagination. That's not me saying that at all. I mean, you know, my favorite Halo game is Halo 3. I just do think because of the lack of moving parts compared to the other Halo games, there's less room for things to get out of control. Um, and less room for, you know, some moving parts that I just don't think work very well. Because controversially, I'm not a fan of drones. I don't think they're very fun to fight against. Uh, and I understand why some people like them. I just... In my opinion, I think that the drones grind the combat to a halt, and it kind of becomes a shooting gallery, where it's not really a lot of critical thinking, because the drones, they're, they're really not that challenging. They're quite easy to deal with. So it really just ends up being you standing there and looking at the sky and just shooting until there's no more things to shoot at, where when you're fighting the uh, triangle of Jackal Grunt Elite, that's a little bit more interesting because you've got three different AI all playing off of each other. And depending on which one you attack first, it completely changes the dynamic of the way that the engagement will play out. Hunters are okay. You know, they can exist outside of the triangle because they're supposed to be kind of like the, the um, oh shit moments that kind of break up the flow a little bit. But thankfully in Combat Evolved, because of how little health the hunters have, it makes it so that they're not that intrusive and they don't really break the flow of pacing, which is kind of why I don't like the way the series has been treating them as mini-bosses. I don't think they ever were mini-bosses. They were just kind of... They are almost like vehicles, in a sense, in the way that you interacted with them. Only with the Hunters, the key part of them in Combat Evolved was getting close enough that you could land that insta-kill pistol shot. And the trade-off for the pistol is if you wanted to pick up more interesting weaponry, you were sacrificing the potential to one-hit-kill hit, a hunter if hunters are on that level. So, you know, there's a lot of interesting parts about Combat Evolves, uh, well, Combat Loop, that I think the series lost as it got more complicated. And, you know, that's not bad. Some people prefer a little bit more uh, going on. Even if some of those things don't exactly gel well, uh, gel seamlessly into Halo's combat loop. 
This level features probably everything you're going to see in Combat Evolved in terms of the way the encounters are structured. You're going to see vehicle sections, you're going to see stealth sections, you're, you know, we're right now close quarters, stealth, like we're, we're seeing it all here and this level kind of acts as a uh, best of highlight reel for the different play styles of Combat Evolved and while that is neat, I do think the level outstays its welcome. If it was shorter, I'd probably like it more, but... It's a little bit too long, in my opinion. And I mean, some of the people who haven't gotten very, like, who aren't the greatest at Combat Evolved, you know, who really struggle in Legendary, it, this is one of the more difficult levels, because you're, uh, you have to cross way too many bridges. Too many bridges, too many rooms full of sleeping grunts and stuff. Trying to see if I can save my rocket launcher ammo as well as get a hold of a ghost. Yeah, Combat Evolved is fun though, and it, it frequently rotates between Combat Evolved and Halo 4 for my spot for second favorite Halo game. Yes, I know people don't like Halo 4, people like to, you know, but I don't think Halo 4 is as bad as people say, and I do think at its core Halo 4 kind of returns to a more simplistic combat loop, though, you know, some aspects of its sandbox and encounter design I do think hold it back. I think, uh, it's not, not to, you know, go into a sprint tangent, that's definitely not what I'm doing here. I think that a problem that Halo 4 definitely suffers from is how it's able to fit automatics into its sandbox and the way that you encounter other Covenant, because Due to Sprint, a lot of Covenant are positioned far, far away from you in levels. And in the event that you do not have a precision weapon to act, you know, confidently take them on at those long ranges, you find that you have to use an automatic, and the, the only way really to get close enough to use that automatic is to sprint across this long hallway or long plane so you get right in their face and shove that suppressor or storm rifle or, or assault rifle in their face and just unload and because that's very inconvenient because it requires you to get so close to them you just find you have to stick to uh semi-automatics and long-range weapons which kind of you know breaks down the combat a little bit and gives you a little bit less variety to work with which halo 5 despite me not liking aiming down the sights in halo and you know it, the way it kind of treated automatics trying to make them viable at longer ranges which i think defeats the point of well scoped weapons and stuff like that i do appreciate that halo 5 was able to at least tackle the issue of not having players being forced to sprint across long environments to shove an assault rifle in the face of a grunt just to make it viable just you know at the end of the day though i don't think that should have been an issue in the first place, and I do think it still breaks down Halo's combat in different ways, but that's this is not the point of this conversation. I'm trying to I had a point that I wanted to bring up. I completely forgot the point I wanted to bring up. Oh, you know what is kind of interesting? So if you look at Bungie's original concept art for the Jackals, they're they're very chameleon-like. They have weird, you know, uh, lizard eyes that look in different directions. They've kind of got the spiny mohawks that you see some uh, species of lizard have. And there's also, like, they've kind of got the uh, more ho hooved slash bulbous webby looking feet. And it looks like Bungie, they were, they were kind of envisioning the jackals as kind of like hanging from trees uh sniping you kind of chattering to themselves as their big lizardy eyes are looking around like a chameleon's eyes do you can even see in some of the concept art their uh sl their sleeveless arms the reason they're exposed is because they were supposed to have like forerunner hieroglyphs tattooed all up and down their arms Bungie really wanted to give the Jackals a lizard vibe, and then for some reason during Halo 2's development, they changed them to birds? 
it's just interesting. It's interesting to kind of look back. There's a lot about Halo Combat Evolve's depiction of the Halo universe that's very, very different from how the series was handled going forward. I also think of uh, the Master Chief and the way he was kind of handled in Combat Evolved. He, he was not as powerful and badass as he was in future games. In fact, a lot of the badassery came from the player. Chief did very little outside of cutscenes to drive the plot forward or do cool things. Most of the cool things that were done were left up to the player. You know, you're the one who ultimately uh, triggered the self-detonation of the Pillar of Autumn at the end. You were ultimately the one who made it to the end of the Warthog run and survived the explosion of the Halo ring. And I do think that does lend to a lot of why Combat Evolve's story is considered a lot more grounded despite being equally as crazy as like Halo 2 or something. I think it's more so that Combat Evolve's story is more believable because Chief isn't doing any of these things separated from the player, like doing wacky things like skydiving onto a uh, skydiving onto a Covenant ship with a bomb and detonating that bomb. Like, everything you're doing is in the level. Like, you're doing all the crazy, wacky, badass things. And so that the fact that you were the one who did it, you lived it yourself, it kind of lends to an air of like, yeah, I can see why Chief did it, because I did it. Which definitely was, Bungie made a conscious effort, I forgot the exact quote, but it was part of the uh, design doc, I think, for Halo 2, where they were saying they wanted to portray Chief more as, like, a Superman. Kind of get rid of some of that groundedness of him, and then also, to be fair, a lot of the reasons Chief is doing things in the cutscenes outside of the player's control is because a lot of levels and things had to be cut. In Halo 2, you know, Halo 2 is very publicly troubled development. And basically, Bungie, they replaced all those awesome levels for time constraints with basically a cutscene that kind of gets what could have been an awesome level out of the way so they can move on to the next level and, you know, try to get the game done with without being a complete disaster. <laughs> I really feel for them. I mean, definitely, I think Destiny and the way Bungie's ha been handling the Destiny franchise has kind of shown that that company has an issue with organization and kind of staying on task and getting their ideas fully fleshed out. Um, Halo 3, you know, publicly was kind of done by a not even B team, more like a C or D team. It was kind of slapped together and rushed out the door because a lot of the big boys at Bungie were sick of Halo and they didn't want anything to do with it. They wanted to get it over with. There's a very interesting Vice article about the uh, history of Halo under Bungie that's a lot of fun to read. And it kind of gives a very disturbing insight into how little Bungie kind of cared. Not to say that they didn't care, because obviously they do, but it seems like Bungie accidentally kept making games people liked, as opposed to intentionally making them. Like, Combat Evolved, it sounds like the story was less of this coherent story that they were working on, and it was more of how do we... Okay, we wanted to ship with, like, 20-something levels. We can't do that. How do we ship the few levels we have left and also string them together in a narrative that makes sense? There was also a lot of uh, internal fighting and arguing about whether Chief should even have a personality or be a Gordon Freeman type in Combat Evolved, which is kind of why Chief is very inconsistent in his writing. I believe in the Vice article they even mention at some point some of Microsoft's people did writing for the game outside of Bungie? I may be misremembering. But that, that's part of where that uh, this cave is not a natural formation line comes from. It's because... Well, Microsoft's people, they were under the assumption when writing that line that you entered an actual cave, not like a Forerunner cave. So they wrote that line under the assumption that it was like rocky looking, that it wasn't like metal and clearly designed by something sentient. <laughs> yeah, it's just, it's interesting, the history of Halo. 
it would be a lot it, it'll be a lot of fun kind of in a decade from now or whatever when i assume a lot of uh 343 and the way that they handled the halo series when that starts to come out because like obviously everything doesn't say secret and contained for long you know things do eventually come out whether it's via interviews with old veterans of a franchise or something it would be interesting just to see 343's side of the story with like the troubles and tribulations of handling a series and how they uh did it di they, how they handled the troubles and tribulations differently from the way that bungie handled them it's just very interesting. Making games is a lot harder than I think people give it credit for. Or I think that people understand that game development is very difficult, but I don't think they really get how difficult game development is. Um, something definitely that I've learned from being friends with a lot of the people at 343 and not, you know, chilling or anything. And this isn't, I mean, you guys know how hard I am at points, almost unfairly on some of, you know, 343 and their choices. Definitely, I don't think games are ever lazy. Because a lot of game developers, you hear stories about basically uh, marriages ending, friendships ending, a long, ludicrously long work weeks where in some instances just to get the game out on time developers have to sleep at their desks in the studio because they can't risk going home showering uh spending time with their family and stuff because it's like they need to basically put every waking hour fuck okay that was definitely me i was being very stupid with the way i handled it it's hard to talk and play at the same time but it's it's very you gotta push yourself almost to the breaking point in some instances to get games out on time and definitely when mismanagement comes in where it's like maybe the development process could have been more organized that puts even more stress on some of the the boys down on the floor and it kind of you know it really sucks so i i never think that a game development is lazy i can say though that in some instances in some instances, a lack of ambition can be a factor where basically, you know, the, the project isn't as ambitious as it could be. But I definitely still think the act of getting the game done is a very trying and stressful situation for some of the guys down below. And I mean, even some of the managers, even if the game is not very ambitious, you've got a lot of things you know, you've basically got a, a day full of meeting different departments and uh, transferring different uh, narratives to different departments so that everybody is on the same page. Because as much as I wish that we could have had the older days of game development where it's like basically 10 people in a garage making a video game and they're able to communicate with each other because they literally sit across from each other. Game, game design has become so ludicrously large that you find I mean some studios have well over a thousand people and so you can't sadly have a gigantic warehouse of desks where a thousand people are all just lined up in rows you know you, you, know, you gotta have uh, multiple levels you're gonna have multiple departments and stuff and you've gotta have uh, somebody who's able to carry communication between the different departments and sometimes that's why Fuck. Okay, yeah, I gotta focus for a second. I'm goofing off, I'm talking. That's why sometimes you have a lot of uh, issues that slip through the cracks, because sometimes it's miscommunication. Alrighty, let's get going this way. Goodbye, hunters. You know, it's interesting. The hunters... Uh, I've been playing a lot of Marathon lately, Bungie's first first-person shooter before Halo, and it was definitely like a response to Doom or Bungie was super inspired by Doom and they wanted to make their own version of that. <laughs> yeah, Marathon's very interesting. I'm currently uh, making a video on it and the act of playing through it is very difficult because I do think a lot of elements of Doom have not aged particularly well. And that's, that's completely fine, you know. But 
do, marathon has a lot of ideas some that it some that it acts sometimes it acts upon those ideas very very well other times it definitely is not very successful but i see a lot of where their inspiration for halo came from and there's actually a lot of things about marathon and its story and themes that have kind of changed some of my perspective of halo I thought the had all the but uh here we go come on but in Marathon, what's kind of interesting is there's a... A lot of the aliens resemble the aliens in Combat Evolved. And sometimes I wonder almost if Bungie was intentionally alluding to the Marathon universe within Halo, almost like they were trying to subtly hint that they may be linked somehow. There's a species of alien in uh, Marathon. They're these gigantic cyborg things that... They sound super creepy. They sound very creepy. It's very, very startling when uh, you hear their scream. Because they sound very weirdly childlike in that it's like a it's like a howl, a childlike howl. And I know that that's very goofy sounding. And I mean, if you hear the sound bite out of context, it'll probably sound more goofy than actually frightening. But combined with the eerie atmosphere of Marathon, and that like creepy howl when you hear it in the next room and you're like, oh God, it's these guys. It's definitely very unnerving. But this uh, type of enemy that I'm talking about looks startlingly similar to the hunters. Yeah, it's just, you know, it's interesting. There's also another species of alien that looks a lot like the fallen from Destiny. Yeah, Bungie's an interesting studio. It's kind of sad to see how Bungie has fallen. You know, Destiny is a game I've actually grown to appreciate over time as it's been fixed. We can say what we want, and we definitely can say what we want about the way that the monetization was handled in the first game. With the uh, DLC packs and the ridiculous pricing like ridiculous pricing but i do think what the first destiny is now is actually a pretty solid game bungie did a very good job of taking what was launched flawed and retroactively reworking it and definitely i'm not you know an expert on destiny i i've played quite a bit of destiny 2 because destiny 1 it was very uh cool to see how Bungie reworked it into something very excellent and so Destiny 2 I wanted to give a shot and well we know how that turned out <laughs> but I'm not the biggest expert on Destiny 1 so you know I don't know if maybe there are still issues with it but I'm not an expert and the Destiny community is an expert and clearly they like it and clearly Destiny was able to hold numbers and is now highly regarded in its final form so I'm going to take their word on it and just say yeah Bungie probably did a lot of things right that made it a lot of fun. I wish it was on PC because I can't play it at uh, 30 frames per second with the nauseatingly low field of view that Bungie seems to be infatuated with. But, yeah, Destiny 1, I feel like I can definitely respect. And the Destiny universe, I do think, is pretty cool. But in Destiny, there's... The Fallen look a lot like a species of alien in Marathon. They're kind of like your... It's tough, because Marathon doesn't have, like, a triangle like the Covenant. You know, it's a lot more Doom-like, where there's just different enemies. I'd say the equivalent to them are like grunts and not grunts in that they run away but grunts are the most common enemy that you see and so like these enemies they, they look very elite like in that they've got a very thin very tall stature but they've got multiple eyes they've got stabs uh, that they use that kind of shoot out energy and stuff they look a lot like the fallen I'll just say that <laughs> Yeah, Marathon's very interesting. The soundtrack is also very good for Marathon. It's very, very good, the soundtrack. Yeah, here we are with some more of that stealth. It's kind of weird that the Halo series didn't uh, do anything with stealth going forward. I know Bungie originally wanted... Uh, 
it was part of their original version of the Halo 2 engine that would have supported, um, if not dynamic lighting, something very, very close to it. Or, uh, you know, a very good imitation of dynamic lighting, where you would have the ability to, like, shoot out uh, lights and shroud a room in darkness, and then, you know, like, the brutes and elites that were patrolling looking for you would, like, turn on their flashlights. There was a leaning... I know there was uh, also, you know, everybody knows there was Sprint, but they cut that because, hey, turns out Sprint doesn't really work in Halo, which is something Bungie found out and then kind of gave in by the time Reach came out because everyone else was doing Sprint. But, yeah, it was, it was interesting that Bungie wanted to kind of continue stealth and see, you know, where they could take it. And then, you know, after Halo 2 kind of, you know, shit hit the fan in regards to that game's development and so it was like they they sort of had to dial back a lot of their ambitious plans and just go with what worked before and what worked was the core combat loop and halo 2 i do think is definitely a lot messier it's core combat loop than combat evolved uh there's a lot more moving parts and there's a lot of subtle changes to the way that the ai work that i think has kind of kind of hurt some of the AI engagements, but it's still, it's still that core, uh, Halo combat loop. I can't, blah, blah, blah. I just had like a stroke. Halo combat loop. And I think that Halo plays really well. It's going to be interesting to see where, uh, Bungie goes with Destiny, because it really does seem like they don't know what to do with the franchise i think of the way that uh they like shared world they they kept toting the shared world uh experience of destiny one and stuff they were trying to make it more about like a social experience where you're in this living breathing world and then with destiny 2 it seemed like they were trying to market it more as like borderlands where they were like it's a loot and shoot game you know it's all about collecting guns and shooting bad guys and clearly that was not the way to go. Yeah, it's it's just it's gonna be very interesting, and it's kind of sad that uh, Marath or uh, Destiny is going through a lot of the same. Bungie is repeating the cycle that Halo went through, where it was like Halo Combat Evolved came out, it had issues. But it was pretty groundbreaking and, for better or worse, set a lot of trends that other video games would follow. I think of the way after Destiny was an out-of-control success, now every single game under the sun has to be a live service game with updates and mmo light elements. I mean, Call of Duty of all games now has social hubs, like a, <laughs> like a goddamn MMO. It's so weird. To see Bungie and, you know, every game now, you're starting to see a lot more games implementing the uh, lowered reticle on the screen. It's not, it's offset, which I do like. I do like that other games are starting to follow that trend because I don't like centered reticles. I prefer uh, slightly lowered reticles because I feel like, here, you know what, I can actually show you why I prefer it right here. So, okay, pretend I'm going to be shooting, you know, this light, like this light's an enemy. So here we go. Pretend that the field of view field of view is maybe a little bit lower than usual because it's a console game. If I were to shoot this enemy, here we go. But look, about half of my screen is useless floor. Now, if the if the reticle was lowered, it would be like this. And then there we go. That's how I shoot the enemy because you know my gun is now shooting a little bit lower because the reticle is now this low. The ground is taking up much less space. I've got a lot more room to see what's going on above me. So it makes a lot of elevated encounters more interesting. And also, I do think it uh, highlights the size and scale of rooms a lot more because you can see, you know, what's going on above you. So it's like, wow, this room's actually pretty tall. It makes you feel a lot smaller in the game world. You know, if the reticle is a little bit lowered. So that's why I prefer lowered reticles, but yeah, it's kind of funny to see Bungie, you know, starting to set trends again. It's also interesting because after Combat Evolved was a breakout success, you saw a lot of video games 
suddenly having to have ammo counters displayed on their guns. You know, obviously trying to mimic the uh, assault rifle, which was quite iconic and unique looking. And then, you know, obviously as Call of Duty became more and more popular and everyone started to follow that, you know, boring gray brown military shooters started to become a thing. And so a lot of the more unique artistic decisions started to get phased out of the industry. But then Destiny comes out again and, you know, sure enough, we've got ammo counters on some of our guns. And then you saw that was starting to come back in a way uh, with Infinite Warfare having ammo counters on a lot of its guns, like Halo. It's just, it's weird to see Bungie just doing this again and again. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Bungie. I'm hoping uh, Halo 6 has the ability to offset the reticle to the lower uh, half of the screen, because Halo 5 has a very low and narrow field of view, which is, you know, part of the course with the Halo series. But with Halo 5, the act of having it centered, it, it's it's a little bit more obnoxious because Halo 5, um, this isn't us talking about whether the enhanced mobility works or not, you know my opinions, but there is a lot more elevation and a lot more elevated gunfights and having to kind of check above you in Halo 5. And due to the fact that the reticle is centered, it, I get a lot of motion sickness because I'm constantly buh, up and down, up and down, you know, like to check above me. So I wish that it was, uh, I like playing Halo 5 on the PC because there are mods to let me expand my field of view so I can see my peripherals both to the left and right as well as above me. So I don't need to kind of check above me so much and swing that camera up and down, making me, you know, giving me a headache and hurting my eyes. I get, though, why some people prefer to have the centered reticle. You know, they're used to it. Those are just my thoughts. You don't need to necessarily agree with me. It's just, I have very, very odd opinions, if you've noticed, in regards to my enjoyment of games. And definitely, my, my opinions on games change with um, each passing year. There's a lot of things about the Halo series I hadn't appreciated before that I now appreciate because of my mindset and the way it's kind of changed. I've also uh, grown to accept that I can be a harsher critic of video games and my favorite franchises and stuff. Uh, I used to be a big supporter of Halo 5 as well as 343's gameplay changes and the direction they were taking, in part because there was this YouTube channel I used to watch, oh god I forgot the name of it, Crap Gamer or something like that, and basically he was super super pro Xbox, and I'm a person, I don't know if I'm a chameleon, is that the term? where it's like your personality is heavily influenced by the people that you hang out with. I know that everybody's like that to an extent. You know, it's definitely not new. Oh, interesting little tidbit. If you can get to the Banshees quick enough, uh, you can just basically skip this whole section that I'm going on. But I don't know if the term is chameleon, but my personality is influenced by the people I'm around. You know, who knows? Maybe that's because I'm still in my early 20s. And so my personality is still forming. But that crap gamer guy that definitely wasn't healthy for me to watch those channels. I became obnoxiously pro Xbox and pro con like pro console pledging my allegiance to a piece of plastic uh, with hardware in it, essentially, which is, you know, that's that's silly. That's silly. Like, don't do that. It's a brand. You don't need to be a fan of a brand. You can like the console, but don't be like an obnoxious brand where you close off a lot of your opinions because it doesn't lie. It's like sports teams, though I, I get it, you know, sports teams are a little bit more fun because that's part of the competition of sports. But yeah, the crap gamer guy, he influenced a lot of my pro Xbox at the time opinions. I definitely was like, Oh, all Xbox exclusives are great. The Halo's great because it has to be great because it's an Xbox exclusive. Fuck the PlayStation. Um, 
And so I basically uh, obnoxiously defended a lot of the gameplay choices. And then just after a while of clearly understanding something wasn't right with the way that Halo 5 played, but not being able to accept that maybe it's because, like... Maybe it's because it's not designed the way I enjoy the Halo series. After a while, I just, it's kind of like I went through almost like the stages of grief when Halo 5 came out and it finally ended with me accepting that this was not the way I like Halo games to be designed. You know, not saying Halo 5 is badly designed or whatever, because I do think that is all subjective. People like Halo 5 and they don't like Halo 5, but Halo 5 is not what I liked about the Halo series growing up or why I like playing Halo. But yeah. No, and um, me getting my PC also kind of definitely opened my eyes up because I built the PC, the gaming PC, in like 2014, the beginning of 2014, I want to say. And yeah, that definitely changed my outlook a lot. You know, I stopped watching that channel. I uh, A lot of that pro Xbox nonsense started to get out of my head, thank goodness. And, you know, here I am, opinions constantly evolving and growing as time uh, goes on. It was like a weirdly personal tangent I just went on. I don't know what spawned that. <laughs> it's just one of those things when you don't have people to talk to and you just start babbling. It's like your, your tongue develops a mind of its own. There we go. Let's open this. Yeah, and we're, we're nearing the end of the level now. I will see if I can get somebody uh, so that... Hopefully Tyler, because he's a lot of fun. I like playing with him. He's he's uh, my New Zealand friend who has a New Zealand accent, which, you know, lends to some very humorous gags between us. But he's also another Halo fan, grew up with the franchise. I'll see if I can get him to join, um, preferably for every single level as we continue forward, plowing through every Halo game, which I love the Halo series, but I have a feeling I'm going to hate it by the time I'm done with this. Let's play every single goddamn level in Halo. <laughs> you know, if you guys enjoy this, the more personal conversations, then some episodes I could do by myself, but... I think people do enjoy the banter that comes from two minds kind of uh, intellectually jousting. Now, I don't want to say that because that's that's very goofy. That implies that anything we say has, has like intelligence behind it, <laughs> which it doesn't. It's usually just us babbling and goofing off. There it goes, Chiefy. And, you know, that's the end of the level, guys. I hope you enjoyed. That is definitely the longest level, in my opinion, for Combat Evolved. I would say it's longer than the library. I could be definitely wrong, though. But I will see you guys on the next one, preferably with Tyler. I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your week. And just remember to like and comment. Also, hit the bell icon, because YouTube apparently is still up to some of their goofy shenanigans behind the scenes, making things even harder. Uh, for videos to reach people so any amount of help well helps but you know already guys thank you